Hello everyone. This is Amber Two Thousand here. Welcome to my channel. Well, I play a variety of games and do new relations for fanfics. I'm really hoping you you enjoy my content. If you do, make sure to comment below. Leave a like. And subscribe with the lower case and so on. Right, until next time, this is Amelie2000. Welcome to my channel. So, hi. The only link left, po chapter one, prologue. After the seamless week of her life, Max Caulfield was faced with an unfair and an impossibly difficult decision. She was forced to choose between it and showing the safety on the entire town, sacrificing the love of her life, best friend and soulmate, Chloe Price, or saving the girl's life by sacrificing the town and possibly many lives within it to a disastrous storm. Because of the love Mass and Chloe sealed at that moment, the timeline split into two, each choice becoming a reality. In both scenarios, Mouse chose to photoshop at the exact same moment, forcing the timeline to merge it back into one. Timeline number one. Flipping through the endless paces, the hipster found the photo she was working for. On one of the real occasions, Chloe stayed at the Caulfield's house. Ryan took a picture of them in front of the Christmas tree, which was set up adjacent to the fireplace. Chloe had her turn out and giving her best friend bunny ears. While Master smiled, oblivious to the fingers behind her head. She laid the photo on her bed and began to focus. The distant sounds of a young pirate captain laughing filled her out so much a tail slid down her cheek, breathing shattering as she attempted to catch a controlled breath of air. She finally inhaled properly, focusing first to see one more once more on what she had set out to do. As we already begun to wink and fling out around her, she could barely speak. Chloe. My Chloe. We'd be back together soon. Timeline 2. Chloe placed both hands on either of Master's cheeks, gently, gently pushing her closer, head creaming inward. With two, with two sets of eyes closed, the lips inched together and locked in place. It felt tender and sweet, and seemed to last forever. A trillion of energy persisted through the photographer's body. By the end, they were just staring into each other's blue eye, each other's eyes, blue reflecting blue. Tears be beginning to fill, not because they were afraid, but mainly because of the stale awareness of each other's unconditional love. It was perfect. After slowly pulling away, Mask crossed the photo with one arm, the other wrapped around Chloe. Suddening and focusing on the photo, Mask noticed the room breaking in and out of existence. Perception's troll then retracted, as they had with each photo of she experience. She heard the laughter of a younger version of Chloe and she audibly gasped like the wind had been knocked out of her. Unsuccessfully and excitement filled her heart and the two girls faded out. Before returning to the present, she and Corey changed one thing in the past, causing Rachel Amber to leave Akaya Bay prior to falling victim to Jefferson's dark room. Mo's timeline. Whoa! Master's chains as a scent of balsam and cinnamon filled her nostrils. The camera blinded her with a bright white flash for a moment, 
Me forcey could fully react. She felt a tight squeeze around her shoulders. Mass! Oh God, mass! Chloe caught out, not loosening her grip in the silence. This is wild! She looked around, mouth hanging open in disbelief, looking at her arms and hands and body. Her mind was filled with shock. Even her voice sounded different. God, I can't believe you just jumped with me. Mass waved that after removing her eye, eye pass. There was so much she wanted to say, but knew she knew she only had a brief few moments before they'd be back in the present. We don't have much time. What if we write ourselves as, oh no, uh, our future selves? Chloe calmly asked, moving her shoulders towards her ears in a struggling motion. Masters, we had to try and figure things out alone, but this was a new experience. She felt a sense of comfort and trust knowing Chloe was there with her. Looking deep into, deep in the tall girl's clear blue eyes, she smiled. Considering for a moment, Mass replied, That could work. Mass quickly and thoughtfully wrote out a letter on a notebook paper, put it in an envelope, sealed it, added Chloe's address to the front, then attached a sticky note with the questions. Chloe, this has to work. It just has to. That older girl treats her friend and kissed her on the cheek. You fucker, it work. That's the dollar for the thrill, guy. Masculine go full uncontrolled sobs as the essence of reality begun to burn out of existence. I love you so much, Corey Price. I love you so fucking much, Mass Caulfield. Another dollar for the thrill, guy. The girl's plan worked, and Rachel left left the bay prior to her dosing. Upon returning to the present, Corey decided to visit her in Los Angeles, while Mass met with a stranger who claimed to have the rewind power before her. She discovered that the power was connected to an enemy entity called the Wafter. It was part of some commod an offset balancing act no, known as the cycle. Was Mass and Chloe were, were we in, what, was Mass and Chloe reunited and because of the joint photo jump that moves the timelines they found out Chloe somehow messaged a power of her own. When the, t when the two combined their powers, they whipped the hole in time and space that led lead the mass to the realm where the water existed. The girls uh, planned to work and waste the left for Kaya Bay prior to overdosing. Upon returning to the present, Chloe decided to visit her in Los Angeles, while mass met a, a stranger who claimed to have the rewind power before her. She discovered that the power was connected to an energy called the Waster and was part of some chronologic balancing act as known as the Cycle. Once Mass and Chloe reunited, and because of the joint photo job that merged the timelines, they found out Chloe somehow had manifested a power of her own. When the two combined their powers, they whipped a hole in time and space that led Lead Chloe Mass to where the water existed. Can inform Mass that he could see the past, present, and possible futures. He also stated that she needed to sacrifice Chloe because the cycle demanded the ones with the power to give up the love of their life. She refused and was holding the trains where she was own. So, in other sacrifices in an endless loop, you have no idea just how connected you two are. I see everything that exists as atoms and molecules, cells and matter. At the atomic level, beyond anything you could, uh, could, could ever know, 
you two still a bond. And other word, uh, and others who are in love, don't atoms do not waste the same as yours. We must a yin and get in again, as you people would say. But none of that matters. A life is demanded. The cycle will collect. I will sit here and starve to death before I allow Chloe to get hurt. It's not happening, Walter. You just have to watch what happens. No matter what, this time will indeed be different. If you do not understand, Mass Caulfield, your being here is no accident. Everything has a purpose. Hmm. He considered. Perhaps it is my responsibility to show you your path. The man hold out both hands, crossing and uncrossing appealingly at the wrist. His old feeble bones creaked and popped as he rapidly raised, waved his arms. Death, disasters, sacrifices, more death. Death, disasters, sacrifices, more death. Death, disasters, sacrifices, more death. Death, disasters, sacrifice, more death. She was going weaker and was forced to take a knee. I have to get out of here. We see as deep as he could, strolling past the grave, she located the moss bar again. It took nearly everything she had remaining, but she drilled it as hard as she could. A tiny pulse chiseled outward, but quickly faded. The thick of gold fell to, to both knees, as her body was giving out. It was then, in that moment, she heard her captain's voice, just barely, like a whisper. After breaking free from the treasure trance, Master Shingler's the entity's frame, causing him to fade away in, in the week to reset. The to find, she found out her. She found her way back from the realm to join Koi and Wazel on the cliff. Once again, being forced to make the same polarizing choice all over again. Just as Mass and Koi were about to sacrifice themselves for the other, Wazel snapped the photo and destroyed it, taking the decision away and placing the outcome on her shoulders. Rather than the one with the power, in turn, she was a said sacrifice, and the town was still destroyed by the storm. No! Chloe said, horrified and moving towards her girlfriend. Fuck! No! N not again! She and Matt's locked eyes and Willie really they had traveled back to the day of that unfilled decision. We've been through two months! Fuck! Chloe, there's so much I need to tell you, and I may never get the chance after this. What are you talking about, Mass? The two choices can never be merged into one. All our love is so strong. It put all the both choices decisions together. It took us whipping a hole in the fucking space and time for me to realize it. But one decision must be chosen. One life is demanded by the cycle. If we don't comply, we'll be back here again. Over and over. Until we do. Master pointed towards her partner's pocket. Corey stretched her hand in and reached its contents. Pointing out the butterfly photo Master had taken in the bathroom but restroom. It seemed like a lifetime uh, since they had uh, last seen that fester, and it made her heart sink with knowing what it represented. No! No, no! There's gotta be another way, Mass! No fucking way we come so far only to end up here again! I can't leave you! Yeah, I'm afraid to die, but I'm more afraid what will happen to you after I'm gone! It's my job to protect you! Forever! We got that mess and Chloe! Fuck! I won't let you die, Chloe. I made my decision. The brunette reached out and seized the photo from her girlfriend and began to focus on the pistol. No! 
Chloe stream as he finally reclaimed the item. I know what you're doing, you goddamn beautiful bitch. The wing was pounding down, soaking the gold. So, there's no fucking way I'm letting you take my place. If I lose you, that's it for me too. You might as well pull the trigger on both of us. Matt snaps at the poster, grasping one corner while her girlfriend holds tight on onto the other. A small tugging mass ensued, ending in a cellmate. Eat away! The go small girl thing. I have to go back. At that point, it's my decision. I need the photo regardless. So you might as well release it and let me go. I know it isn't fail, but there is no other way. A life is required. Shit! All from the pelvis scores. A hoon soaked down and grabbed the poster, whipping away from the duel. I understand. This is the only way now. Mass, take care of yourself. And Chloe, precious Chloe, don't forget about me. The blonde winked out, winked after a small courtesy. Laters, she whispered as he pinched off the sides of the photo and turned it down the the middle. And maybe a curtain of bright yellow and red flames and when it dropped it adopted the <laughs> and adopted the goal. A billion streak blasted from the corner and then the flames vanished and a translucent doe stood peering at the two remaining girls. Way so Corey Streets as the doe turned and pounced towards the woods. Dematerializing as it ended. Mass! We won! Please! Her eyes were peeled back. Joy queens. Rivers flowing from her face. The time shower hold her hand out, closed her eyes, and begun exploring the gray. She searched, but the street spot was gone. It was no more. It's gone, Chloe. I can't feel it anymore. Fuck! Try again! Noticing the infinite look in the freckle girl's eyes and watching her shake her head, she realized the power was gone. Corey cleans her bullet networks and tenderly soaked the feather earring her friend gave her only moments prior. The girls, overflowing with tears and pain, hold each other and stood on the cliff, dust washing as the storm destroyed their hometown and everyone in it. Again. Mass and Coy left Akea Bay and moved into the Carl Fields Seattle home. From the depths of depression and moaning, the girls lean on each other for strength, finding healing in themselves through each other's profound love. Mass on her G GED and Coy started a photography business. Learning Mass's offer is several galleries. The lovers, after leaving the past behind them, got a gaze and drove headfirst into their new life together. Mass and Chloe were madly in love. The photography business was successful, and they were planning to get married. Suddenly, Wastel appeared in the dream to warn them about a bleak future, which was equally beautiful and horrifying. Chloe, wake up! Hey, get up! Chloe! Okay, okay. Chloe's sitting up in the bed with her eyes so close. She ran her fingers through her own hair. She knew it was way too early to be awake, so she laid back down again. Get your ass up! You have a lot to talk about! It maybe it could to Chloe that it wasn't Mass's voice she was hearing. She hurriedly flung her eyes open and noticed the steering. It glowed a purple hill with sparkled bright white stars. I know this place, she said aloud, looking up into her left. She saw a saw shaped wall light glowing with an amber tint. Waisel? Yep, it's me. The older, older girl confirmed. I brought you here. Do you like the setting I created? But wait, you, you know, 
Oh, yes. Yeah, that. Yeah, I'm still dead. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Why? What corner, Chloe? I'm here. She sat up, walked to the edge, and spun around, seeking the body that belonged to the voice. The tall girl desperately cut her eyes back and forth, searching around the dim room. Frankly, she spotted the girl she saw sitting at her desk, looking close to Weston. There! You wait there! She pointed with stretched eyes. Um, wait! I can see way through you! Are you a ghost? No, not really. Well, I don't know. Maybe this, though, is a dream. Trying to focus directly on me. Do not wake up. There are several things we need to assess. One of which is a threat to the most important thing ever in your life. Mass? Well, not real, exactly. We still somehow existed in the dream space where she could po see possible outcomes of potential futures. And one, all but one, Mass and Chloe's future daughter is murdered by we we little Sherlock's, who somehow discovered her existence and decided that she was an abomination that needed to be eliminated. In the meantime, Mass and Chloe discovered they could connect deeper with one another, way beyond the changeable world, while making love though an exorcist connected, connected it at the a comic level, creating an exact copy of in, of the engaged couple, ending with Matt becoming pregnant with a daughter as foretold by Wessel. After the last two continued to swell, Matt found herself lost in a, in a sound gap well, she couldn't hear anything besides hers and Chloe's giggling. All else became silently still. She opened her eyes and could see colors of each laugh. As time seemed to crawl forward as, at a dramatically short pace. Each short motion an audible syllable that seeped her godliness's mouth and rose upward like ocean waves of stasis. Wheels in velvet. Kiss me, her lover demanded, staring at in through the brunette, looking back f towards the blue hill booty. She noticed the bright and vivid shades of love pouring all over them. She had never seen such beautiful colors, and no words had been created to decide what she was witnessing. As the lips burst, a magnetic pulsing energy drew the girls together. The purpley quill sapphire eyes aligned and locked in place. Mass could see, taste, smell, hear, and feel the deep connection the, the couple sailed. Tainable reality trickled from sight, and she couldn't discern logic from the impossible. The universe disappeared, leaving them with a weightlessness they felt only a few instances before. Unlike the other times, she completely let go, allowing their love to take over. As she released control, she realized her fiancé had done the same. Pressing the sputtering bolts of energy precipitated and rippled between the pair. The girls sailed several passionate moments together, and as the pressure spiked and, and peaked to a height she had never experienced, the younger girl walked up at their partner. She no longer saw fresh or the physical world. All she could see was a bright, circular white ball of energy shining from where her lover's body used to be. Looking down at herself, her materialized Terrorized old body was gone too, but a massing, growing spell recited where she once laid. Without warning, the true girl's words, becoming one, processing and whipping inside each other, they were connected at a level beyond perception. The once in perfect alignment was a fairy mass hope would never end. For what seemed like an eternity, the spills of energy were suspended in male air, wrapping in 
inseparable embrace. Reality fades in and out while consciousness strode around the realm. I struck thought was finally replaced with rational concept of When awareness returned, the girls were laying on the couch, eyes closed, smiles on their faces. That's holding each other the way the universe is always intended. Nothing mattered but each other. God damn it! I love you, Mass! Chloe crewed. I love every inch of you! Every part of your body, every part of your heart, and everything we cannot see is fucking perfect! Like dug at it, still whiting and clinging to a high. Mass and Chloe stay tangled together, never wanting to leave each, each other's tusses. They hug, kiss, and wind their hands all over one another's bodies. Cool! I don't know what's happening between us, but that... That was the most beautiful thing I have ever experienced. A few tears slightly fell from her fiancé's eyes in a moment of poor and extreme love. Mass read in and kissed the girl's cheeks allowing the moisture that trickled down to land on her hips. She, she moved her tongue outward to taste the salty wetness, now glistening on her own mouth and cheek. I love you forever, babe. Always. The yarn of figure gold felt the intense purity of the love in her heart was filled. Wrapping their arms around each other, then the gaze couple laid on the cows built to each other in, in the universe and drifted into a deep and joyous slumber. <clears throat> With ways to assistant, the pair traveled to the future, trying to really save their daughter from being sought. After many attempts, Matt and Chloe realized they would never be able to save the little girl's wife with that post. Instead, they traveled to the exact moment of Destiny's birth. When the Doris found out about her existence in the first place, Chloe's used a portal in the dream space to make sure the Doris never decided anything about Destiny. The plan worked and they were able to finally focus on their wedding. The best friends to lovers got married and enjoyed their honeymoon. Two years later, Mass Chloe and the two year old daughter were at a festival when they noticed a strawberry blonde haired teenager with a streak of red in her veins, staring in the directions. As it turned out, the teen was their daughter, this, who had been traveling back in time to observe events in her mother's life. From the corner of her eye, she knows a girl who had to be in her late teens a prep against a street lamp looking in the indoor direction. She was on the opposite side of the red brick half wall that separated the sidewalk from the fences. About 20 meters away, look! She bowed her head in the teen's direction, more sitting for a partner to discover what she was seeing. Where have I seen her before? That's a girl for my wedding, Mass! Check out the red streak in her hair! What the F is she doing? Chloe was working on not cussing in front of their daughter since the girl repeated a choice word a, cu a couple of months ago back. It couldn't always be helped, but she was trying her best. Oh damn, you're right! Upon noticing them looking back at her, the girl turned and briskly started walking away. I gotta find out who she is! Chloe? Mass caught up with the girl and Des agreed to return to her home, town home with her mom's in, in a two year old version of herself. She didn't ask the dirty time traveled or grist away, taking Mass with her. Mass realized that Des could do more than, try, tr than travel up and down the, the unit timeline. She could actually travel to different universes. Amory, the teen, ended up back in their universe, but Mass was pulled into the Watcher's realm once more. 
This time, the water was now way so. The glimmering, ruffled outline of a fi figure could finally be seen at the end of the path, where the water was recited. As he approached, she noticed a winging glow illuminating the walls and ceiling. But it was too bright to make out any specific faces of what was up ahead. Standing o only a few meters away, Mass could tell there was a person, or at least an entity, representing a person, existing behind the grill. She shivered her eyes to block the bright sunshine light waves that spread across the narrow landscape and bars. Mass, you made it! The comet echoed through the lair, bouncing off the walls and impeding into the dark space behind her. She recognized the voice, but couldn't quite make out why it sounded so familiar. Her mind jumped around from person to person, like a game of guess who, trying to determine which face the voice belonged to. The personating sound was amplified in this place, so discerning the owner of the vocals was more than more difficult than it might have been anywhere else. Hello? I know your voice. Massa crucially spoke when in her first sin of curiosity while so staring her eyes from the weightiness of the figure with her hand in a little in of on her forehead. I knew you were strong and obviously you're hot as hell like me, but damn what you had to go through the last time you were here would destroy most others. It was beautiful straining your break through the, from this side. Last time I only really saw what happened on the cliff. Suddenly, Mass pinpointed the voice and knew exactly who she was talking to. so? But how are you here? <coughs> Rachel informed Mass that there was a reason she could previously see possible futures. She was the she was supposed to fulfill her purpose to become the washer. She told Master to free of them faster the prime timeline into an infinite number of multiverse realities. She and Corey began the process by spinning the timeline in trill, and we still finished it off by shouting it when she sacrificed it herself. Those universes started using sustainability, causing them to begin Facing out assistance. They didn't restore the multiverse back to a singular prime reality. They would all pay severe consequences, with Mass and Corey possibly not surviving. Rachel still th that a high intelligent version of Corey within the shattered multiverse figured out what was happening, so she devised a plan. That Chloe, along with many other versions of Mass and Chloe, were working together for a possible solution. As it turned out, just as the ability to time travel between universes was the missing piece of the gumbit and provided the answer. With the help of the science and technology, Mass and Chloe's daughter spread herself amongst the multiverse, restoring order and merging the universes back to, to Prime, saving her moms from possible doom. That sat on the side of the tub in her bathroom, where she arrived at moments prior, pondering the overwhelming success she just experienced. During her journey, she met numerous versions of her mom's. 3, 16, 78, 194, 2,952? Way too many to ask you to count to f or fully recall. Some of the minis were vividly clear on her mind while others felt like distant memories, took away never to be thought of again. There was one hazy memory that greatly differed from the others. In most every instant, dust collected a version of her moms who had been spread across the multiverse, and we showed them in the prime reality. However, she was also pulled someone, 
So he also pulled someone else in the realm, in a realm, so he only heard stories about. The mastermind version of her mom convinced the teenager to restore Rachel Amber as well, merging the former actress with her prime form. When she did, she received a message from the washer that she would never forget. I love your mom so much, you know. They have a special to me. You know, undeniable proof that love always wins. The time travel could feel the power inside her like a dark pass passenger lingering in the background of, of her mind, watching and waiting. She wasn't sure if it was a, a good thing or a bad thing at this point. All she knew was if she had it, there must be a good reason. She would be careful if she traveled as her parents taught her, but if she needed to use it again, she wouldn't hesitate. Just realize the future would be upon her before she knew it, and the rest of her life was right in front of her. The red streak teenager brushed her teeth and hail, then exited the bathroom. She changed into a nice light blue pair of jeans, a fiery graphic t-shirt. Her favorite Malta Godfrey powder jacket is shred on her boots. She stepped out of the room and joined her moms in the kitchen, where they were standing with each other's hands hold out in front of their bodies. Fingers in a locked. Corey released her hold on, on mass, threw one arm around the teen's neck and the other around her wipes. She stood in the middle and formed these trees to free together in a, in, in a sort of freeway tug. The trio still linked, strolled together towards the door that led to the garage. Before they broke the hold, Corey turned her head towards mass, then hug, then towards, the, towards her daughter. Twice she said one of her, the most meaningful words that would, input, that would be inputted in Dusty's mind for the rest of her life, forever. Nearly two years after restoring the multiverse into a single reality, Dusty was surprised with a visit from Wesel. She didn't think it was possible as the watcher was supposed to only observe and not get involved. Sorry, I had to solve you like that. L literally, Jess. It was the only path I could see to get you. The woman dropped like her hand down an impish smile tightening the sand on her face. Hazel offered safe aids with eyes, stared back at the goal with a combination of childlike playfulness and the wisdom of a hundred lifetimes. Lowering the kickstand and prevailing her vigor over on its support, the bond with a strawberry wood streak in her veins, removed her helmet and set it on the bike seat. So Rackley shook her head back and forth and then ran her hand through the messy hail. Stopping, stepping around to the, to the front of her ride, she hastily walked closer to the woman. You're not supposed to be here, right? I thought your job like all the journey was just lost about that we to begun I know you paid more than you feel tall and to be able to enjoy a peaceful life now but this you have a very specific set of sales I need your help one final time hi hi everyone this is in my 2000 again well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Because, you know, I, I really did enjoy making it. But. So I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, and subscribe with the notifications on down below. Till next time. Bye!